Hey, I'm Nate Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of North America prior to its colonization by Europeans. This has been my primary field of work and study for over 10 years, especially in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands. Now, today I want to talk about meme theory and how it's useful to archaeologists. So the concept of a meme is much more uh, well-defined and significant to science than how it's typically thrown around on the internet, usually to describe funny pictures with captions in them. It's actually an important element of the theory of culture. So the biologist Richard Dawkins first proposed the idea of a meme as an idea that works like a gene. Um, a meme exists in the mind of a person and allows that person to reproduce the same actions and behaviors, both with high fidelity and with the possibility of variation, just like genes do. And those are kind of the two important components, is that information is maintained and perpetuated with high fidelity to the original concept and also with the possibility of variation so that it can change and adapt to whatever the circumstances happen to be. So the illustration that I like to use is uh, baking a loaf of bread. So that act requires a set of materials and processes to have a successful end product, so a recipe, and the recipe is the meme. So a baker will have that recipe in mind when they're working, but they have the ability to modify it. So every time they reproduce the same or very similar uh, you know, loaf of bread, that's another reproduction of the meme. So using our biological metaphor, it's another generation of the same mimetic or conceptual lineage. The baker might add an ingredient like spices or herbs, or might, they might change part of the process like using um, a Dutch oven instead of a brick oven, or they might put the dough directly on hot coals to bake it, something like that. But if they make a change that's significant enough to make the end product functionally different from the core meme, then something interesting happens. If the baker removes an ingredient like yeast and creates an unleavened flatbread, like a tortilla, then you get it's something like a speciation event. So you've taken one meme, the loaf of bread, and split it into two memes, loaves and flatbreads. So meme theory gives archaeologists a mechanism to use evolutionary biology as a metaphor for how cultures change. And like I said in the Benford video, which I'll throw a link to in the description, culture is all about groups of people acting in particular and patterned ways. That doesn't mean that all people in a culture act exactly the same. Obviously, they don't. But their actions do tend to be variations on themes, or more appropriately, variations on particular memes. So instead of natural selection, we have a cultural selection where people will favor specific traits in their reproduction of those memes. So like making a spear point with a contracting stem instead of an expanding stem. Um, hunting bison by stampeding them into dead ends instead of out on the open plains. Uh, making pots with particular decorations, cooking soup with particular ingredients, so on and so forth. So in a particular culture, people will repeat certain traits or processes more often than others. So it's important to note that just like natural selection, cultural selection tends towards sufficiency, not optimization. So by and large, people are trying to get a job, some task done. And this is one of the more, most important things that culture does, is that it gives humans a mechanism to adapt to our environment without having to change much biologically. Instead, we can learn new ways of living to meet those thermodynamic needs that uh, Benford put front and center in his models of culture change. So, like I said, because cultural selection tends towards sufficiency and not optimization, people are unlikely to devote significantly more time, energy, or resources to over-engineer the things that they make on a regular basis. They do it sometimes, but for the most part, people are trying to make whatever it is they're trying to make with as little energy as possible and as, li as little cost as possible while still accomplishing whatever goal they're, they're trying to uh, achieve. So this gives us you know, a pretty solid mechanism for why cultures change. When there's a change either in the physical or the social environment, so either a climatic shift, something like an immigration episode, um, the proliferation of new religious ideas, we can expect to, pe to see people start to behave in different ways to adapt to their changing environment, to these new circumstances, this new context. So you start to get variations, new variations on old memes in response to these changes. 
So I hope uh, that was at least somewhat interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.